So you have installed Google Analytics 4 on a website, but how can you be sure that you did it correctly? In this video, I will show you how to check it. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing. When you install Google Analytics on a website, you have to check if that is done properly. Otherwise, when you come back after a week, you will check the reports and you will see that they are empty. Or maybe the data is complete nonsense. That is why I highly recommend that you apply all the tips from this video in order to avoid those fundamental problems. So let's take a look. In this video, I presume that you have already installed Google Analytics for either with Google Tag Manager by having the GA4 configuration tag and it might look something like this, or you might have installed Google Analytics 4 by adding the GTAG code snippet directly to the source code of your website. Most of the tips that I will explain in this video will apply both for Google Tag Manager and for gtag.js. If you're using Google Tag Manager, then you can click the preview button at the top right corner of the interface, and then enter the URL of the website where you want to test this Google Analytics 4 implementation. So I will enter the URL, click connect, and then I will see that this is connected. This will work if you have actually added the Google Tag Manager container snippet to the website. And then when you go to the Tag Assistant, which is the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, you will see that your G4 config tag has fired. In order to check it, you should click on the container loaded. If your tag is set to fire on all pages, and then its status should be succeeded right here. But we are not done yet because even if the tag is displayed as succeeded right here, it does not mean that the data was properly sent to Google Analytics all the time. So another thing that you should check is the debug view of Google Analytics 4. So if you are using GTM and you have enabled its preview mode, then you will also be able to start seeing data in the debug view of Google Analytics 4. So let's go to Google Analytics 4. Right now I am in the admin panel, but here you can hover your mouse on the left sidebar and click configure, then click debug view. And as I've said, since I already have the preview mode of Google Tag Manager enabled, this adds an additional signal to the requests sent to Google Analytics 4. Therefore, I start seeing my data right here. So if you're seeing your events right here, for example, page view, maybe you have implemented some additional events like clicks. So you might see them right here as well. So if you see these events, this is a very good sign and it means that most likely your Google Analytics 4 setup is working properly. Now, if you have installed Google Analytics 4 directly with the GTAG tracking code and you're not using Google Tag Manager, then there is another way how can you start seeing your data in the debug view of Google Analytics 4. And for that, you will need to install a Google Chrome extension, which is called GA Debugger. Below the video, you will find a link to that extension. And if you haven't installed it yet, you will see something like add to Chrome. So you should click that button right here. And then you will eventually see an extension that looks something like this, GA Debugger. Right now, this extension is disabled, but if you click it, its icon will change to on. So this means that right now, Google Analytics Debugger is enabled. And then go to the website where you have installed your GTAG JS code, and then just refresh the page like this. And because of that extension being enabled, you will start seeing your events right here. If multiple visitors have enabled the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, or maybe multiple users have enabled that Chrome extension, you might see several devices right here. So you should click right here if you have multiple devices and then select the one that belongs to you. There is no easy way to distinguish which device is yours. So there's a chance that you might need to actually click one device, then check the events, and maybe you will see that these events are coming from your device. Then you will need to click another device and then do that until you find your own events. Then one more way how you can check if the data is working properly is that you can go to real-time reports of Google Analytics 4. So go back to the GE4 interface, then go to reports, and then real-time. The difference between real-time and debug view, at least what I have noticed, is that there is some delay in real-time reports, and sometimes it takes more time to start seeing myself in the real-time reports. And also in the debug view of Google Analytics 4, you can test your events at a more granular level. You can see what kind of parameters are sent with those events, if they are correct displayed and so on. So usually when it comes to debugging my own traffic, I use debug view of Google Analytics 4. But if you don't want to and you have some patience, you can use real-time reports as well. However, as you can see right now, I cannot see myself right here, even though I can see my data in debug view of Google Analytics 4. By the way, if you want to learn more how to use debug view of Google Analytics 4, I will post a link 
to another tutorial below this video. Also, one more thing that you can check to see if the requests are sent properly to Google Analytics 4 is to check the network tab of your developer tools in the browser. So you can do that by clicking on three dots in your Chrome browser, then more tools, and then developer tools. Here you should click on the network tab. Then if you see something right here, you can click this clear icon and then refresh the page once again. And then here in the search field, you should enter the word collect. All requests sent to Google Analytics 4 contain the word collect. And here we see one pending request, but you should ignore that one. Instead, take a look at another request of which status is 204. So if the status is 204, then the request was sent properly. And you can click it right here and you will see that next to that status, we see this green dot. Then one more thing that you should check, but it will take more time, is the actual standard reports of Google Analytics 4. Even if you see data in the debug view, it does not always mean that it will be displayed properly in the regular reports. So that is why you should also go to the reports section and then check the data right here. However, here's the thing. The data right here will appear within the next 24 hours after you started sending the data. So you will have to be patient right here. Debug view and real-time reports show the data nearly in real time, but all the other reports, they need more time to process the data and to display it in the reports. So when the next day comes, then you can go to reports, let's say acquisition, or you can actually go to engagement and then pages and screens. And here you should start seeing some data. This is my test property. So right now I'm seeing some gibberish, but nevertheless, I can see the data right here. And the final tip of this video is related to the cross domain tracking. If you're dealing with a setup where multiple different domains are involved, then you must also configure cross domain tracking. For example, here I have a website where the main domain is myshopify.com. And let's say that the part of the same user journey is also another domain, which is analyticsmania.com. So these two are completely different domains. And Google Analytics is not able to track this out of the box. You need to do some additional configuration. Luckily, this can be easily configured in Google Analytics 4 settings. So let's go to GE4, then admin, then data streams, select your website data stream and then click more tagging settings. Here you should configure your domains by clicking this and then enter conditions that will match both of those domains. So in my case, that will be myshopify.com. So if the page domain contains myshopify.com, it means that this is my website. And then another condition is that if the URL contains analyticsmania.com, then this will also be treated as my own website and then click save. By the way, if you want to learn more about cross domain tracking configuration in GE4, I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. So if you want to make sure that cross domain tracking works well for you, you have to then test your setup and check whether the value of the GE cookie is the same. Let me show you. So click preview in your Google Tag Manager container. And first we will enable the preview mode for our My Shopify domain right here. And here is the page where I have the link that will redirect me as a visitor to another domain. So I will click it right here, then a new tab will open. And first of all, we will see that the URL is decorated with some parameter. So this is needed for the cross domain tracking to work. And then we will need to do one more thing. So we have to open the developer tools of the browser. You can do that by clicking three dots, more tools and developer tools. And then let's go to the application cookies and then click on the domain of your website and then enter underscore GA. And the value of this cookie right here ends with 3506. Let's memorize it. Now let's go back to the first domain of the website, which is myshopify.com. And let's do the same thing. Open developer tools, and then look for that very same GA4 cookie. And it ends also with 3506. So these cookies are identical. Therefore, our cross domain tracking will work properly. Also, we can go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4 once again and check if we still see one device instead of two. Because if you see two devices and both of them are kind of yours because one sends the events from this website and the other device sends from your second domain, then it means that you have configured something incorrectly. But in my case, we have a lot of page views. One page view is coming from the GTM course, myshopify.com website, and 
the latest page view is coming from analyticsmania.com. So this means that everything works properly. But if you're dealing with multiple subdomains of the same website, for example, blog.mywebsite.com or shop.mywebsite.com, then you don't need cross-domain tracking. Google Analytics will handle subdomain tracking automatically. But if you want to learn more about that, I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. And that is how you can check if Google Analytics 4 is installed properly. Obviously, there are more things that can go wrong, but these were the fundamentals that are necessary. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.